Hello. Advent comes from a Latin word meaning arrival. And although we know there could have been no preparation at all for the arrival of the baby Jesus in the stable, or shed, some say, some of us know a bit about preparing for the birth, birth of an animal, at least, in a stable, or in my case, a sheep shed. In advance, we sort out warming lights, ropes, clostrum, just in case the you can't or won't feed the lamb, various injectable solutions, fresh straw, fresh hay, and water, and of course, iodine for the navel. A two-way resuscitator is a luxury for us, but not for the lamb if it saves its life. Finally, a special energy solution for a totally exhausted mother who simply cannot stand up and a couple of apples and a dish of units as a treat for her or all of the new mothers. In the Bethlehem stable, there wasn't the technology we have, but there was a fuss and a frisson of excitement when Jesus was born. He was expected by some people who had read the Old Testament prophets, but then the place suddenly was full of, full of shepherds. Have you ever wondered why it was shepherds who were told by a bunch of angels to go to Bethlehem? To answer that, I need to take you back to the 4,000-year-old first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis. Here, we read that we were created in God's own image and we're immortal so as to live with him in a state of eternal loving bliss. To benefit from such a state of bliss, we had to be self-aware. Such awareness arises only from a capacity to choose, hence God's gift of free will. I have heard some say that God gave us that gift so that we could choose good or evil. He gave it so that we could choose good. However, as soon as self-will was chosen, trust was broken, and time and space came into being. Man became mortal and was then forever trapped in space and time. God, however, is not. This is because the barriers of mortality are permeable to the Holy Spirit, which can act on either side of the barrier. It did so when the angel Gabriel visited Zachariah and Elizabeth before their child, John the Baptist, was born. And the Spirit of God crossed the barrier again when Mary accepted to be the mother of the Messiah, Mashiach in Hebrew. An adventure had begun for Zachariah and Elizabeth and Mary and Joseph, and we too can see Advent as an adventure. Mary was to be the mother of the one who was coming from God to remind the Jewish people of their covenants, which included their role in bringing the message of Yahweh to all the peoples of the earth. As Mary already knew, this baby was to be about his father's business of redeeming mankind from the sin which had separated the creation from its creator from the fall onwards. Mankind was mortal and no amount of sacrifice in animals could bridge that chasm. The only way that irremediable gap could be spanned was by God himself doing it. And now, to answer the question I asked you about the angels who announced his birth to shepherds, under the old covenants with God, shepherds provided their best lambs for the slaughter. And so it was right that they should be there at the birth of the sacrificial lamb who was to be the final sacrifice of the old covenant and usher in the new. He lived the perfect life and carried the Spirit of God with him as evidenced by his miraculous healings, his power over the elements of nature, and his teachings which were so different from the established order that the religious authorities of the day could not tolerate him. They did more than silence him, and so they contrived his death. I will not go further into the Easter account, but will say that in this session of Advent at the start of the church year, we can be confident that the baby in the stable was embarking on the adventure of his life as he reached manhood. He faced the evil one and was tempted to doubt his own messianic calling, 
tempted with worldly power and to prove his trust in God. Later, his own mother at the wedding feast in Cana, I can't say tempted him, but encouraged him to start his ministry before he thought it was right to do so. But he knew the scriptures and that he must follow them. He was baptised for the remission of sin, although he was sinless, and we know the accounts of his confirmation with the Holy Spirit by, and with the dove, reference Noah and the flood, the voice from heaven, reference in Moses and the burning bush. Each year at Advent, we too can regard this as the time of arrival, a time when we arrive at the stable, like the shepherds, to acknowledge his birth and marvel, as did the shepherds among us and still do, at the knowledge already built into the ewe, whose body knows she has to lick her lambs and talk to them right away. She also knows if she has sufficient milk for one or two or three, and if one of them is sickly. In my videos, other videos, I recount tales of how ewes told me of difficulties ahead and of how they thanked me for helping. One ewe even came and licked me after a difficult birth. The shepherds in that stable would have experienced those very same feelings as we do today, and they too would have felt the immediacy of that contact with nature and its divine origins. Just like the baby Jesus, we receive and give presents at Christmas, but we all know what the true gift was at Christmas and who gave it. That gift from God being the reinstatement of our eternal life with him. We lost our immortality when we were separated from God in Genesis, but we can begin our adventure in the new covenant with Jesus this Christmas. For those who are not on an adventure with Jesus, we can do so by doing what he did at the commencement of his ministry, be baptised. From Genesis of the Gospels, I now turn to the book of Revelation and the final words of the Apostle John. He was the only faithful apostle, not martyred, who had been with Jesus throughout his ministry. Towards the end of his long life, he was visited by an angel who gave him his, these final words, which are, I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from these words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city, which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming, coming quickly. And come, Lord Jesus, come. John's own words echo down the ages. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen.